All right, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Let me move that over there. Got the mic up, coffee. Okay. <clears throat> um, not prepared for this because I never prepare for these things. So I want to talk about a little secret. So come on in, sit down. Get yourself some coffee if you so choose, water, whatever. This is a secret camera that will help you get into film photography. I've kind of talked about it before here and there, but I wanted to make a dedicated video about it because I was looking online the other day not to buy anything, but strictly for the research purposes of this video. And I almost, I, I almost broke, I almost bought one because the deals were so good. Pentax P30, P30T to be more specific. These are going for like 30 bucks, 50 bucks. Um, with a lens, you can get one for like in the 50 to 80 buck range, but camera, lens, under a hundred dollars. I mean, come on. <laughs> film photography, as we know, is an expensive hobby. Film, expensive. Developing, expensive. Getting decent scans, expensive. Uh, if you find a good uh, development lab, great. You want to get a good camera? Oosh. You want to get a good lens? Oosh. That's tough. It's tough. And I'm not saying that this is by any stretch of the imagination a good camera. It is a camera. It is a supremely adequate camera. It does have a lot of the similar issues of the ME Super and of the ME and of the program and the Super program and the MG and the MV and all of the other Pentax M body cameras, except for the MX, which is the Advance kind of sucks on it. And not only that, but the Advance lever on the P30T, uh, it just looks like they glued it on at the last second. And my neighbors are running their laundry, so I'm hoping that that doesn't get picked up by the mic, but we will find out. So yeah, this just looks like it was glued on. They're like, oh fuck, we forgot. <laughs> forgot the advanced lever. Um, they just had this laying around. It looks awkward, but it does kind of fit the mold of the body fairly well. And it does kind of come in onto the ergonomic grip nicely there. It also models the same memo slot of the Super Program and the Program Plus, which is kind of nice. Uh, but instead of having the slot here, it has a little window there. There's this plastic backing as opposed to the leatherette, which is fine. The whole body is a plastic build, which is fine. It's not my favorite camera by any stretch of the imagination, but for what they're going for, you get a good amount. Uh, it's a very good camera for that. It has shutter speeds ranging from 1 1,000th all the way down to a one second exposure bulb and a hundred, one one hundredth of a flash sync speed. More importantly though, there is a fully auto setting. And you'll notice there are the contacts here, which means that this will accept and will interface with Pentax KA mount lenses. And Pentax K mount is the standard Pentax mount. The A stands for auto. So you could get an A mount lens on here, toss that on auto, toss this on auto, and you essentially just have a point and shoot which is pretty great. This camera came out in 1988 and it has the kind of retro futuristic styling, I would say to it. It's surprisingly ergonomic. This front grip is pretty nice. The LED here is the signifier for your self timer, which you can activate by pushing down on this button and pushing forward on the power switch and it will reveal an ST for self timer. Push down on that all the way and it's off. Up once is on. If we pop open the back, we will see the other special secret surprise this camera has, which is right there. These little pins are DX code readers. I've not talked about it a whole lot, but essentially what it is, is each roll of film has this little readout on it right here. And I'm gonna say this, uh, because not each roll of film, but Kodak, Fuji, Ilford, like the main film manufacturers, I think Cine still has it too but I don't know if Lomography does. There's some manufacturers that are just reproducing film um, 
God, that washing machine is so loud. Okay, I'm hoping this is fine. Anyway, a lot of the manufacturers reproducing film don't have DX code on it. If they do, like this, you put it in here and the pins here will feed onto the board the ASA or ISO of the camera. So it will just register that this is a 200 ISO. There is also a way that you can kind of cheat that. I'm not entirely sure how to do that yet, but I will make a separate video about that when I find out. And other than that, it's a pretty straightforward camera. We have the take-up spool here, which is as simple as lining it up to the orange and just closing it, which is really great. Everything about this really screams consumer camera. The full auto settings, the compact nature of the build, the lightweight plastic materials. It's not the best. It won't work unless you have batteries. It does take two LR44 batteries, but I think for 50 bucks or 80 bucks, this in a lens, like that's pretty much all you need to start your film photography journey. And for the most part, it will carry you most of the way. You can do a lot with this camera because it also gives you the option to select your shutter speeds. It gives you all sorts of creative control, which I personally enjoy. Um, my only issues with it, I've talked about it before, the advanced linkage, linkage system, not a huge fan, and the advanced lever I do think looks a little hokey, but if you can get over that, which you probably can because you're not me and I have to like look at these things for hours on end so all these little things stick out to me more, then I would say go for it. It's a great camera and Again, it's like a little secret, like no one really knows about them. They are a little bit harder to come by. Sometimes it like, there'll be a bunch on eBay all of a sudden and they're really cheap and then other times they're kind of scarce. So I would say keep your eyes open if you're looking for it. But the big thing, the big ticket item about this is the lens mount. In my opinion, which is again, very biased, I think the Pentax lens mount is one of the best. Uh, not only are the K-mount lenses really good quality, they have some of like the, the best iterations of lens coatings on them, so like the color rendition is always pretty primo, but also there's like this really, really um, surplused wealth of third-party lens systems, which basically means that you can get a lens for like $5. And it's not gonna be the best lens by any stretch of the imagination, but if you wanna try out, like, I wanna see what 28 millimeter looks like, you can get that for five bucks. You can get that experience. And if you like it, then you can choose to upgrade to a higher quality lens. Or if you don't like it, you're only out five bucks. No big deal. Yeah, the resale value is not gonna be there, but that's always another little tool you have in the toolbox that you can come back to. And this lens, this lens mount really is what leads to that. A lot of the other came out cameras out there are just kind of getting up a little bit in price. Even the Emmy Supers are getting expensive now, which is lame. The Emmys are, eh. The Emmy is fine. It's a good camera, but it doesn't offer the same options as this does with the manual selection here. And also I just prefer this dial to the Emmys little dorky dial thing, but that's a personal preference. Um, so in terms of getting into the K-mount system, this is probably about the cheapest way to go, and that is why I recommend it as a little sleeper camera. Again, it's not the best camera in the world, so be careful, but <laughs> I don't know, it feels weird. I'm, I'm usually trying to like promote good things, and I can recognize that there are good qualities about this, but inherently I wouldn't ascribe it as a good thing. It is a for what it is, it's a good camera. So take that for what it's worth. Um, anyway, I hope this helps. I hope this was a good constructive thought process for you. If you're looking to get a different camera, get into the Pentax K-mount system, have a backup camera, something like that, or just start film photography, I would say this is a pretty good place to start in the year 2023, or at least in the month of June, in the year 2023, this might be a good place to start. 
Um, I'm gonna keep looking because I think that there are some better cameras out there. I, I still really recommend the Spotmatics. I think those are great. The only problem with Spotmatics is they don't have the auto features, which some people need to kind of, for that ease of use. Uh, and a lot of Spotmatics light meters don't work. So that adds another level of complication. Um, <clears throat> but if you just want to spend like 50 bucks on a camera, I, I would look at this. Um, so that is all. I hope this helps. I hope this was enjoyable. I might make a complete separate rant video on this advanced lever because I think it's ridiculous. It's not as bad as the Minolta, I think it's the X, the Maxim 9000. That advanced lever is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I will put a picture of it here because it bothers me so much. I also made separate videos on that. Uh, but the point being, terrible lever, uh, good price. So check it out if you so choose. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it as always. I'll catch you on the next one.